Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Okay, a little bit of a bonus episode this week, because I've been having some technical difficulties with the series I usually put up on a Saturday, Fading Hearts. So I thought, let's do one of these instead. And the last episode, if you remember, we all went out on a hike. We were sat around a campfire in the middle of the forest, and we just noticed that um, Elisa and Lena are having an argument. Do we have the choice of going over and seeing, or doing the sensible cowardly thing and stay seated? And I think I'm going to go and find out and see why Elisa is picking on my lovely Lena. So let's give this a go. But on the other hand, why should I care? All I was doing was just watching the fire. There is a saying that claims that one could watch it forever. As well as running water. They tend not to go well together, mind, but there you go. But there was also some third thing there. What was that? One could watch three things forever. Burning fire, running water, and how other people were. The camp leader pulled me out of my daydreaming. Semyon, don't you think it's too early to relax? But what else would I need to do? I honestly couldn't get what Olga wanted from me. I don't know. She stopped for a moment. But if there is something to be done, then do it without hesitation. She smiled ambiguously and went back to the fire to throw a few branches on. After those words, I'm completely sure that she treats me like a personal slave. Or at least, like I'm, fr uh, like I'm a free labour force, which is, strictly speaking, the same thing. I sighed and put my head down on my hands, hoping my torments would be over for today. Someone patted me on the shoulder. I looked up and saw Shurik and Electronic who sat next to me. What do you want? I asked tiredly. Don't be sad. Is there anything better to do? Look, we're discussing the possibilities for the advancement of Cybernetics Club with Olga. And there's a problem. We need more guys. If you could... Uh, he hesitated. Advancement and those guys are incompatible with each other. I said nothing and started to look over at the pioneers around me instead. Well... I don't have time. Can't you see that I'm always busy with the camp leader's errands? Yeah, I guess you're right. It's kind of embarrassing how it went today with Yulana. I looked at him with surprise. It seems that Shurik blames himself for the cake incident. Yeah, it is. All the pioneers seem to be here, but I couldn't spot Slavia anywhere. I think she is angry with me. Who? I asked absently. Yulana. Maybe I should apologize. No, it's not your fault. We sat silently for a while, and then I stood up and said, My legs are numb. I'd better take a walk. I made no reply. I made a few circles around our improvised camp, noticing the close looks of the camp leader following me. Looks like Olga couldn't wait to come up with some kind of new task for me. I haven't found Slavia anywhere. Maybe I should go and try to find her. On the other hand, I felt sorry for Iolana every time I recalled her upset face. Maybe this hike isn't the most entertaining thing ever, but sitting there all alone isn't any better either. But at the same time, I didn't want to go anywhere. Go find Slavia, go find Iolana, remain seated. Remain seated. I guess that's enough for me today. I sat in my previous place and waited for the end of the hike patiently almost physically able to feel the looks the camp leader aimed at me. At last she stood up and declared, And now let's play cities. I had nothing against the game itself, but it's obvious that the hike would take longer because of it. Pioneer sat around the fire. I noticed Lena and Elisa took their places on a trunk opposite me. It seems that everything is alright. And just a few minutes ago, I thought the opposite while looking at their quarrel. But anything is possible. I'd really like to know what they're talking about, but it's impossible now. 
and I could feel tiredness growing in me more and more. My mind was completely blank. To be precise, my head was so heavy that there was no place in it for ideas to unfold. While in better times my brain appeared to be a wide highway with millions of thoughts running by, chasing one another and causing major crashes, now it was more like a footpath lost in the woods which is used rarely and only in exceptional cases. Slavia didn't come back, maybe she had something to do, but once again there's no way to find out now. Okay, let's start. Moscow. Pioneer started to name cities. Finally, it was my turn. I tried to listen closely to catch the first letter of the city I would have to use. Arkhangelsk. Arkhangelsk. Okay. We played several rounds. Each new city name made it harder to remember everything that was mentioned before. My attention was dissipating, and I was already lost in those capitals, megapolises, villages, and urban settlements. Semyon? Semyon! It's your turn. Olga brought me back to reality. Oh, excuse me, and what was the last one? You're daydreaming again. It was Sevastopol. Okay, then. I'll say London. Already used. Well, then. It got me thinking. There were tons of cities in the world starting with L, but it was hard to remember even one of them now. Liverpool? Already there. Los Angeles? Ah, finally. She gave me a scornful look, but the game went on. I could hardly bear to think of another city starting with an L, but fortunately, it was the last round. Okay, that's enough for the day. It's already late. Time to go back. I sighed with relief. On our way back, we walked as we liked without joining in pairs. Night descended upon a camp. A perfectly regular and normal night. It was one of those nights when dark skies, stars, and even a crescent moon didn't cause any special feelings and the chirping of crickets and the songs of the night birds seemed more like routine work noises than a nocturnal chorus. In a few minutes the pioneers were lining up in the square. It was quite late already and fatigue took its toll so our lineup wasn't perfectly aligned. It looked more like a line of vikings after a successful battle where the warriors were happy and smiling, anticipating their return to their families rather than thinking about it maintaining correct formation. But someone else could possibly see a completely defeated troop or a bunch of survivors who have to march to their homeland with the last of their strength. Thanks everyone. And now, go to sleep. It's late already. Pioneers quickly each ran their own ways and I was left together with the camp leader. And we should go too. We went in complete silence to Olga's cabin. Okay, let's sleep. She said, turning off the light. I was tossing and turning for quite a while, recalling the events of the day. On the one hand, I was overcome with fatigue. On the other hand, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I'd forgotten something, done something wrong, said something wrong. And this feeling of incompleteness was tormenting me. It was about 2am. All bad things would end sooner or later. Or at least would take a break. I fell asleep. I don't know what time it was when Olga woke me up, but even before opening my eyes I felt the imminence of death. My whole body ached, I felt dizzy, my mind was clouded by haze. Semyon, wake up immediately or you'll miss breakfast and, more importantly, the lineup. Looks like the camp leader intends to exploit me to the fullness today, the same as any other day. I garbled something, covered my head with the blanket, and turned to the wall. 
In the end, Olga's anger will never go beyond words. At least, I really wanted to believe so then. Stand up right now, or... Or what, I was going to say triumphantly, but kept silent. Not because of fear, just because I felt too lazy to open my mouth. Really, what could she do to me? Lecture me at line-up, hang my photo upon the wall of shame? Or use me for inhuman alien experiments? Well, I'm ready for that too. Just let me sleep a couple more hours. Okay, but if you miss the line-up... The door slammed behind the camp leader, and the sleep which had been about to fade claimed my mind again. I woke up dazzled by sunlight. It was 1pm according to my cell phone, which was squeezing the last drops of charge out of its battery. Strangely enough, my body didn't ache. My head felt clearer, and all in all, it was a good beginning to the day. After waving my arms, pretend, pretending, pretending, purr, purr, purr. after waving my arms, pretending to do early exercises, I sprang out of the cabin and headed to the washstands. Yeah, I slept through breakfast, but we'll be served lunch soon, so I shouldn't worry that I have to stay hungry like I did yesterday. Along the way, I met a pioneer whose face looked strangely familiar. But I was going so fast, I couldn't really see him, and when I turned around, he'd already gone around the corner. There was nobody near the washstands. Everyone is probably busy with Olga's tasks and God knows what else. I quickly brushed my teeth, washed my face, and was already going to leave when I suddenly heard the sound of water flowing from the opposite tap. A pioneer leaned against the washstand over there. I couldn't see his face, but judging by his figure, he looked like the one I saw a couple of minutes ago. How are you doing? The sun's so bright today. I looked up into the sky, shielding my eyes with my palm. Yeah, nothing special. It wasn't easy to get a better look at the pioneer, given the way he stood, the bright sunlight that reflected from the water, and the shiny metal surfaces of the washstands heavily obscured his face and I wasn't able to distinguish a single feature. The camp leader is angry today, so angry. His voice sounded painfully familiar too. Well, she's always like that. Well, you'd know better, yeah. I tried to remember if I'd ever heard this voice or seen this pioneer before. Well, see ya. He turned the water off and quickly marched towards the forest path. For a second I thought of following him, stopping him, but I quickly fought it off as I decided that it's not worth spoiling such a great morning with suspicions and burdensome speculations. Nature was glowing with the bright light of life, lush treetops were rhythmically slaying in the wind, whispering to each other. The breeze gently stoked the high emerald grass. Birds were cooing in the shade, escaping the midday heat. The woods and fields stretching beyond the horizon were dissolving in warm sunlight. I don't know which month it is now, but it looks like midsummer. I distinctly remembered the summer vacations of my childhood and youth, times of fun, leisure and carefree joy. Childhood games. How many there were. I could, I wouldn't say no to playing war games or hide and seek now, or swinging on a bungee, or maybe building a sandcastle and inhabiting it with toy soldiers ready to defend their master with the last drop of their plastic blood. I went to the square and sat on a bench waiting for lunch. It looked like there wasn't much time left before it. From time to time, pioneers passed me, sometimes alone, sometimes in pairs or groups of three. But always someone I didn't know. Elisa, Yelana, Lena, or Slavia were nowhere to be seen. Thoughts about the meaninglessness of existence were circling my brain, but this didn't worry me on such a beautiful day. Just think about it. Who could think of grieving for his life, lived in vain, or lost early while basking in the rays of such a friendly sun? Certainly not me. 
I looked upon Gender. He was meditating, as always. Now he was, he definitely never... Now he definitely never gets any unnecessary doubts. I remembered my first hours in this camp, and the day before, the anguish, the anxiety and fear. That all seems so far away now, although so little time has passed. Will I get out of here or not? It didn't concern me as much as before. Maybe I'm already dead. Then this is the last stop. Please get off the train. What are you thinking about? I look up and saw that pioneer I'd never seen before. Um, I'd seen before, rather. I couldn't see his face again as the sun was shining in my eyes. You know, life. It seemed he would sit down next to me, but the pioneer stayed in the same place, only half turned, which completely killed any hope of seeing his face. Listen, have we met earlier? I don't think I remember you. Well, let's say you know who I am. But I don't. I laughed sincerely. Here, you don't. He answered short. I see. Honestly, it's not like I didn't want to talk. I just didn't know what to talk about. And my soul was so calm, this didn't bother me. Your first time here? He asked a question, but his tone implied he was only expecting a com confirmation. Yes, and you? Me? He paused for a few seconds. Nah, it's not my first time here. One might say I've visited this camp every year since my childhood. Such an answer got me interested. Well, and what was it like before? It's always the same. Olga being the camp leader, all the same pioneers around, all the same lineups in the, the morning, and all these wicked accidents. For a moment, I thought that it was me speaking, not him. Interesting. It's just that with every new, he hesitated, year, more and more interesting things happen, and one gets to understand better what's going on. What are you talking about? The conversation positively triggered my curiosity. It's a pity that I can't distinguish the face of this pioneer at all. Well, every session in the pioneer camp reminds me of the previous one, he said calmly. Probably. This is my first. It shows, the pioneer grinned. But it looks like it won't be the last. Well, it's fun here and all, but... You know how they say there's no place like home? But you still have to get back there. Now, I am absolutely sure that this guy was hiding something from me. To be precise, he stood out too much from the camp's usual ordinariness and was too different from the local inhabitants. What do you mean? You think I'm stuck here forever or something? I said, enunciating every word. The pioneer had no time to answer as the lunch bell sounded. I turned my head towards the loudspeaker, and by the time I'd looked back, the guy was already gone. Thousands of theories and speculations instantly appeared in my mind, but I stopped myself, remembering all the apparent normality of this camp. After all, nothing supernatural has happened in these five days. Moreover, Everything here seemed too natural, sometimes even boring. Maybe this pioneer didn't mean anything by that, and I just misunderstood him. Thinking of that, I went to the canteen, intending to feast. Sometimes it seemed to me that lunch here is akin to the crowds around the soup kitchens during a famine. Pioneers were running around pushing each other, trying to crawl for the first meal and take the most comfortable table. I was kindly standing, patiently waiting for the cook to get me my assigned food rations. For lunch today we had oroshka, which I didn't really like, and cutlets with potatoes. I sat in a corner and mentally rejoiced that I was able to eat in peace. My table was the farthest from the kitchen. I could reasonably hope that the pioneers who were looking for a free place wouldn't reach it. Or would reach it last. However, 
When I moved on to the main course, Slavia, Shurik and Electronic appeared from the crowd. Can we? I had nothing against their company. Of course. Lunch was going surprisingly calmly. Even Electronic wasn't jabbering as he usually does. I finally finished the meal, sprawled in my chair and, satisfied, clicked my tongue. Listen, do you know this pioneer? I saw him today. You know, he's so... I suddenly realised that I didn't know how to describe him. Well, about my height, same constitution... Art to say from such description. Slavia smiled. Well, we have half a camp of such guys if it comes to that. All in all, they were right. Why are you asking? It's just I met him today. And it seemed like I haven't seen him here before. Look in the canteen. I don't think he'll miss much. Why didn't I think of that? That's it. Okay, guys, enjoy your meal. I got up and started to slowly walk among the rows of tables. Lena and Zhenya were sitting over there. I gave them a friendly smile. Alyssa and Yulana were laughing and arguing about something. Olga, surrounded by pioneers. Good thing she didn't notice me. There were hardly any free seats, but the guy from this morning was nowhere to be seen. The situation is getting more and more interesting. Looks like I won't find him here. Maybe he already had lunch. I headed to the exits. It was so hot outside that it seemed like you would instantly melt after coming out of the shade. I suddenly felt like sleeping. I yawned and headed to the camp leader's cabin in order to follow the domestic interpretation of Am Archimedes' principle. In the end, Olga is unlikely to return any time soon. At least I think so. And I will definitely have a couple of hours of rest. Anyways, I really don't expect other options to arise. Especially in this heat. The heavenly coolness of the cabin became my salvation. I took my clothes off and jumped into bed. Crickets were lazily chirping outside. The wind was shaking the curtains in the window and I sank into a dream. Knocking on the door woke me up. The knocks were soft, but insistent. I reluctantly got up and went to open it. Strangely, there was nobody on the doorstep. I rubbed my eyes and stepped out to look around. All the same, no one around. A dream, maybe? It was already four o'clock. I felt jaded. I probably shouldn't have slept in the afternoon. After all, I knew what was going to happen. I put on my boots, left the cabin, and locked the door. But where shall I go? All in all, there's not much time till dinner. A sudden thought came to me that it would be nice to refresh myself, so I went towards the beach. The sun had passed the midday mark a while ago. It gets dark early here in the south. I squinted and looked up at the flaming disc. Who was that just now? I flinched. The same mysterious guy was standing in front of me, and once again his face was hard to see due to the bright light. For a moment the sun blinded me so I could not see anything besides the faint contours of objects. Are you stalking me? No, I was just passing by, he answered calmly. Then you should know better. So you haven't seen anyone? Correct. I rubbed my eyes, but it did not help. Why didn't I see you at lunch? I asked bluntly. I wasn't hungry, he laughed. I blinked a few times, and when my vision came back... Sorry, I blinked a few times and my vision came back, but the pioneer had miraculously disappeared once again. What the hell is going on here? Now, I was absolutely sure that there was something strange about that guy. He must be directly related to everything happening around here. I will have to find out. But for starters, it's good to confirm that I'm not mistaken, and that he is just a local pioneer. It was quite crowded at the beach. 
It looked like everyone from the camp was here. Well, no wonder. It's so hot outside. Olga was standing just a bit further apart than everyone, keeping an eye on her army of pioneers. As soon as I thought that coming here might not have been the best idea, she noticed me. And that is our 25 minutes, I'm afraid. And we will find out what Ogre wants in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this. This extra episode of Everlasting Summer. So until the next time, I have been Simon Parsons. Thank you and good night.